now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You're born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Saturday afternoon out there everyone and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I'm your host Jason Salzman. I want to welcome you in to Muskogee Media Studios here in the capital city of Altmulgee, Oklahoma. Thank you for being with us. Muskogee Media presents this great show each and every week here on Tulsa's CW1219. We certainly hope that you're ready for all the great things going on in and around Indian Country, all the news happenings out there. All the big things going down, especially in this uh, this week here in the Tulsa area, uh, Indian Country. It's uh, safe to say converged on Tulsa this week, as the great Shoney Shimmel, everybody knows from the Confederated Umatilla Reservation up in Oregon, now WNBA All Star, the MVP of the All Star Game, came into town to play the Tulsa Shock, who also feature one of the only other Native American athletes in the WNBA. Miss Angel Goodrich, a, a proud Tahlequah Sequoia alumni. Uh, they locked horns this week, so that was a big, big deal around here, and we'll have a lot of great footage for that with you, uh, for you here in the coming weeks. But we've got a great show lined up for you today, lots of things to talk about, uh, looking at some economic impact that the tribes have, some special uh, sharing from some of our other media departments here in our intertribal circle in the state of Oklahoma. Also, we'll take a look at the uh, a recent dedication at Baycone College having to do with the Muskogee Creek Nation. A big, big day there. You know, the Muskogee Creek Nation heavily involved with Baycone over the years. Uh, many things done there in partnership. So it's always a great time when we can go over and visit with them. And we've done things with the Moreau home there. And we've done things with the Adaloa Lodge. So our history with Baycone College on this program certainly uh, storied and goes back a long time. So we want to uh, always show those great stories happening there between Muskogee Creek Nation and that great institute. We'll have you uh, that a little bit later on. Also a big event coming up, American Indian Chamber of Commerce of Oklahoma. You know, do, uh, they do a lot of dealings with Native American owned businesses, tribal commerce, tribal businesses in the state of Oklahoma really get together. There's an Eastern and a Western chapter. Uh, the folks over there in Oklahoma City do a great job. Folks in Tulsa do a great job. They come together though every year for the American Indian uh, Indian Country Business Summit. It's a big thing there for that organization, the gathering as they call it, this year in Durant. And so we'll talk about uh, that event coming up August 10th through the 12th, but we'll also take a look back last year at our coverage just to give you an idea of what goes on at the Indian Country Business Summit. As I said, such a big gathering of folks uh, there with tribal business in mind. It's always a great time to be able to talk with them see all the things that are coming out in Indian country of new ways to uh, generate revenue, really um, uh, help our people in diverse ways economically. So it's a great thing there. And as I said, we've got that and lots more on the show this week. So as I said, lots of big things happening in an Indian country. You definitely want to keep it dialed to Native News today here in the coming weeks. We're going to have so many great things to share with you. Big musical coming up at the joint that's a a Cherokee story in the premier Cherokee location. We'll have that. We'll have, as I said, the Schimmel Goodrich showdown. So lots of things this month coming up on Native News Today. We're so excited that you're joining us here today on this Saturday, and we're going to take our first break. We'll be right back with the rest of the show. You're watching Native News Today. We believe if you teach a man to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. We believe that transitioning convicted citizens back into our communities enhances public safety. We believe that every citizen, even ex-prisoners, are important and are capable of change. We believe in reclaiming our citizens and investing them back into a culture that embraces healing and restoration. We believe in reintegration. We are thinkers and readers. We are dreamers. We are doers and sharers. To honor all things that make our Muscogee Creek Nation strong, we present you with the opportunity to expand your literature and the literature of our children. 
Log on to my own to read books in English and Muskogee. We are Muskogee Nation and we are readers. For three years, kids have been asking their parents, what is that hill on the river going to be? What answer did you give? Did you tell them that someday that half-finished structure will be one of America's most important attractions, bringing visitors from around the country and the world to Oklahoma? Along with hundreds of millions of dollars into our economy. There'll be state-of-the-art interactive displays that bring to life the stories, history, and culture of the 39 tribes that share this state. A 210-acre landscape park and trail system. Beautiful retail and business space. This will be another jewel in the crown of our state's tourism industry, and it will pay eternal tribute to the origin of our great state. It's not a matter of whether we can afford to complete it. We simply can't afford not to. For the current generation of Oklahomans and the generations to come, let's finish it. Let's finish it. Let's finish it. Looking for your next 18-hole adventure? Then take a look at Fountainhead Creek Golf Club. Nestled in the beautiful confines of Lake Eufaula State Park, large sloping greens and well-placed bunkers characterize the Muskogee Creek Nation's Floyd Farley design course and offers a fine test of skill for any golfer. Stay up on all the latest gear and equipment with a visit to our pro shop. Have lunch at the turn at the Clubhouse Grill. We're waiting to accommodate you at Fountainhead Creek. So give us a call at 918-689-3209 or visit fountainheadgolf.com to book your next round. Fountainhead Creek Golf Club, close to home, far from ordinary. Pumakasam ka dat, ipukfang ka, nage, adigat, punhayadi omega, adzayi didet omis. Tayo snok, that's true. Throughout the generations, our elders have taught us to preserve, share, and more importantly, protect the abundant natural resources we have here in Oklahoma. We are the original environmentalists and protector of these resources. The Muscogee Creek Nation believes tribal and state governments must work together to ensure future generations will have clean air and clean water as the ultimate legacy. What is good for Oklahoma tribal nations is good for all Oklahomans. Remember, tribes are truly the original Oklahomans. For more information about Muskogee language preservation, please call us at 918-732-7724. It's that time again. Please make plans to join us August 10th through 12th at the beautiful Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant for the American Indian Chamber of Commerce of Oklahoma's 2014 gathering. Invaluable networking opportunities await, plus a chance to hear special guest speaker Gary Lightfoot Davis. The event kicks off with a golf tourney on August 10th, and the trade show opens on August 11th. Register now at www.aiccok.org. And welcome back to Native News Today. Your host, Jason Salzman here. And as you saw there on that last commercial, August 10th through the 12th, coming up at the Durant, the beautiful Choctaw Casino and Resort there in Durant, Oklahoma. And it's going to be hosting the gathering, the American Indian Chamber of Commerce of Oklahoma. You know, I know so many great people that are involved in that organization. Um, William Lowe comes to mind. He's always been a big proponent of what they're doing, and I think he actually serves on the board. I'm not sure he, he might get me if that's wrong information there, but he serves on enough boards. So, you know, I'll take a shot in the dark. You know, you never know when you might hit, hit the target. But uh, definitely Will and, and a lot of people from here, a lot of people from the Muskogee Creek Nation, a big part of that. I know Chief Tiger has actually spoke at those events over the years. Chief Tiger himself certainly understands the uh, demand and uh, really the vitality of Native American commerce and our tribes doing great business in this day and time uh, in Oklahoma and the national economy. So it's a great thing there, the gathering. And to get you all sort of pumped up for the event, to see what goes into the Indian Country Business Summit, we wanted to show what we were doing this time last year. Uh, in, in fact, this week in Native News Today history, I guess you could call it, 
Uh, this very week last year, we were covering the American Indian Country uh, Business Summit, American Indian Chamber of Commerce uh, of Oklahoma, their big event. And so we wanted to show you this and uh, give you a feel about what goes on at this great event each year. The 2013 Indian Country Business Summit made Cherokee Nation's Hard Rock Hotel its home this week as the American Indian Chamber of Commerce of Oklahoma held its premier annual event. The reason we're here is we're, it's for networking for Indian owned businesses to do business with each other and then we invite the different tribes to come in. AICCO President John Overacre talked about this year's summit and the sustained success of tribal businesses. Even throughout our economy we've had during the past several years, the tribes are still spending money. We're still making money, whether it be from our businesses that are casinos or gas stations, or they're expanding into all different areas. So the tribes are still having money to expand. So there's always, there's always certain niches or certain things that our vendors can actually give and provide serve products and services to these tribes. And they can't do it all, the, the, we're just too big. The, all the tribes, you know, with the Cherokee Nation, the Muscogee Creek Nation, the Choctaws, the Chickasaws, we're too big for one vendor to handle. So it's nice that the tribes can actually cut different pieces of the, the pie uh, and give to these vendors to help them not run their business and make their business successful, but have to help them have a better year than they were going to have. So that, that makes a huge difference. The Chamber also has some headline news out of this year's event. Some big changes coming for the organization. This will be the last year of the AICCO being banded with the Indian Country Business Summit. We are going our, going our separate ways to do some different things. To, you know, as the AICCO board, we, we believe that if you're going to be doing business in Indian Country, all of your events that we host and have should be on the, in Indian Country. So we're actually going to bounce around the state. Well, we'll be up here in the Northeast one year, in the Southeast one year, South Central, and then we'll bounce over towards Central Oklahoma to Oklahoma City so we can bounce everywhere else. We're trying to recruit new chapters up in the far Northeast so we can actually go up there to catch those tribes too. It's, uh, it's an exciting time. We're changing the name. We're changing the, a lot of the different outlooks. Uh, and the hold the speakers as we're going. We've actually did uh, surveys here and I think most people are filling them out this year to, so we can actually bring in the most dynamic speakers for them to help their business grow for the upcoming year. Overacre also talked about the events and happenings of the AICCO throughout the year. We have different things at night, receptions. We do have annual meetings that, the, that will be coming up in November or December where the membership comes in. Uh, we also bring in speakers like for instance, the Chief Tiger, he's actually been a speaker uh, at least once a year for us uh, in the Tulsa area. We do have a chapter in Oklahoma City where they bring in different speakers. And as a board member, I try to hit different ones. Um, they have meetings every month, so, and with my job, it makes it kind of tough. But, you know, I made a goal for this next year that the board members are going to hit the different chapters each quarter. Deanna Moore, who's the marketing manager for Intertribal Software Consultants, talked about the benefits of her business taking part in the summit. One of the best things that I've learned about this show, because this is my first year in attendance, we are able to reinforce a lot of the rapport we have with our existing clients, and we're able to make business contacts with new clientele. We're able to show, showcase our new tribal software directly to people. We can do demos on site. And in this show, we've been able to make contact with so many decision makers and so it's like, it's just the perfect blend. You know, the, our biggest thing is for doing this, keeping everything together, it was like, again, what Chief Tiger said, we want to keep the Indian dollars in Indian country to help the Indian people. And nice to always look back here in the vault at Native News Today, see kind of what we were doing this time last year uh, at this time of the year. And, and it was really neat to be there at Cherokee Nation's Hard Rock Hotel and Casino now. Going a little further south, as we said there to Durant, I know it's going to be another great event. I want to thank them again for uh, letting us be a part of their promotion, getting that out there for them, uh, being a part of the production of the commercial and things like that. So I want to thank them for that and uh, another great event coming up this year. Moving right along to our next uh, feature story this week. You know, the Muscogee Creek Nation, as I mentioned in the opener, such a storied history with Bacone College in Muscogee, one of the premier Native American institutions, private institutions in this country. Um, they have so many great ac uh, academic programs there at Bacone, have put so many people into the medical field, they put so many people uh, into work, and it's, it's a great place too uh, for Native American culture, heritage, and history. And you look there on the grounds, uh, as, you, as I said, the Murrow Home, the Adaloa Lodge, there's just so much tribal history there at Bacone College and, and definitely that ties with the Muscogee Creek Nation and recently the Muscogee Creek Nation uh, through a, a very generous gift 
donation and working with the Federal Roads Program, uh, Tribal Transit, and, and those guys get together, uh, pull all their funds together, and, and we're able to do something great for Bay Cone College and the campus there. And that's why we were up there for the Muscogee Creek Nation, Bay Cone, getting together for this roads dedication, a wonderful day for both institutions. Well, actually, it's a momentous occasion for Muscogee Creek Nation. Uh, we're at Bay Cone today dedicating a, a new road uh, you know, onto the campus that we were privileged and honored to be able to do. Uh, as you know, Bay Cone has a very strong history with Muscogee Creek Nation. And for the opportunity to uh, join in partnerships to improve uh, the campus of Bay Cone, uh, certainly is uh, something that we were looking at and the National Council appropriated the money for us to be able to uh, provide uh, smoother uh, streets for Bacon's campus. It's kind of, I use an analogy of uh, how in life and even in entertainment and education sometimes is, uh, the roads is, is kind of rough and hopefully with uh, smoother streets here at uh, Bacon it, uh, it'll uh, encourage our students to come and be a part of what Bacon offers and to attain an education. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, I believe that we've proved that Creek Nation education is a uh, priority and now we have uh, you know, many of our people that's returning home to be a part of what's happening at Creek Nation. Well, not only with Bacon, I think you know, anytime you can join partnerships to improve and enhance the uh, lives of uh, our tribal members uh, and whoever we can uh, join in partnerships with to be able to do that is, uh, is always going to be you know, something that we want to look at. It's, it's a special relationship and it's a pleasure. Uh, we have had great relations with the Muscogee Nation. Uh, the work uh, to get this project, almost a million dollars, this project, uh, to get it in, get it completed. Uh, it, it's been wonderful, us, wonderful for us, wonderful for the school. It's, it's lifted everybody uh, here. And uh, there were some difficulties. There, there were water runoff issues, uh, sewer line issues. Uh, it, it was not an uncomplicated uh, project, but we got through it. We got through it smoothly, and, and, and here we are. Uh, it's launching other projects. I think as you upgrade uh, a facility like Bacon College, uh, one upgrade leads to another. Uh, one gets others interested in building the place. Just this fall, we're putting $50,000 into uh, a, a, reha a rehabbed building that will become our Renard Strickland School of Tribal Law and Criminal Justice. Uh, that program, 148 students here in that program, and it will now have its own uh, office and building area. That is, that work is starting shortly and will be completed by this fall and will be in use uh, this fall. That's one example. I'll give you another example. <laughs> Tulsa Bone and Joint last week agreed to contribute $20,000 uh, for a training facility. So we're upgrading, we'll have a top-notch training facility over uh, with our athletic, uh, as, as part of our athletic buildings. Mm -hmm. So those are two things that are happening immediately. And if I can be a little long-winded, uh, we are looking at uh, seeing if we can finance the construction of a 400-bed dormitory and cafeteria to be, be placed right here on our campus, in fact, right, right on the grounds in this uh, area. Uh, we currently uh, have a dormitory and cafeteria, but it's way uh, off at the far end of our college. We want to get everything right here on campus, right on our grassy hill here, uh, including uh, dealing with uh, our curriculum and making sure that we adapt our curriculum to meet Muscogee Nation needs for their students. We're also talking with the, the college, which is get, uh, looking to get certification as a two-year college. We, of course, are a four-year college, and we are looking at programs where we can take graduates after those two years at the uh, at the Muscogee uh, uh, College and have them come here for the third and fourth years. These discussions are ongoing right now. And once again, thanks to all the people there at Bay Cone College, all the administration, Muscogee Creek Nation, tribal, federal roads, driveways, making that happen there. Just a, such a neat thing. It's always wonderful whenever we can put out feature stories like that because it's showing that 
You know, these two different agencies can work together, um, and, and that's what Chief Tiger is all about, working together with our, our brothers and sisters that uh, share our communities. That's a big community there for the Muscogee Creek Nation, Muscogee, Oklahoma, in fact. So uh, a great story there, and it's very much our pleasure to be able to share it with you folks today. Uh, while we're on the topic of sharing, uh, our brothers and sisters, our native brothers and sisters out west, the citizen Potawatomi Nation, you know, they do so many great things there economically in the Shawnee area, such a big player and such a force in that area, in the rural communities that surround there, in providing jobs and providing economic revenue for that tribe. They do so many different things, too, to diversify their economy, whether it be their grocery stores, uh, bowling alley. Um, they really are a nice model to look at. And, you know, the principal chief here of our nation shared a video with me, uh, you know, recently, and I also had talked with some of my friends at Citizen Potawatomi Nation, a, a very nice production that they did. And they are allowing us to share that wanted to put it on our show. They certainly uh, appreciate the things our show does, and we uh, appreciate them as well. So with that, we always like to be able to share things when they are brought to us. And this is a look at the Citizen Potawatomi Nation, and not only tribes, but the, the Citizen Potawatomi Nation and the impact that they have on this great state. Most of us know that Native American tribes create an impact in our communities. Unfortunately, many people think it is a negative impact, draining resources rather than adding to them. The truth here in Oklahoma is much different. In reality, tribal businesses are the economic engine of our state, having an impact on many other businesses and supporting local communities. Let's examine how the tribes are making a positive impact in the state. Oklahoma's 38 tribes generate more than $11 billion in revenue each year. Tribal businesses support more than 50,000 jobs and indirectly support employment of 90,000 more people. Tribal payrolls total $1.5 billion in wages with more than $800 million in contributions to medical care, education, and social services. Citizen Potawatomi Nation is only one of the 38 tribes, but we're responsible for a significant portion of that economic impact, and it's growing. Our total impact on state and local economies has grown more than $460 million since 2002, and this year will exceed $530 million. Of course, we also pay state taxes, more than $20 million each year, much of which is earmarked for education and rebated to local cities and towns. And we support Oklahoma public schools. A portion of our tribal automobile registration tag fees goes to help fund schools throughout the state. On top of that, we bring federal dollars to the state, more than $261 million in the past decade, to build roads, provide health care, and fund emergency response resources. But what about locally? How is Citizen Potawatomi Nation having a positive impact on local economies that make up our community? It starts with jobs. We provide jobs for more than 2,200 tribal and non-tribal employees. That's a whopping seven out of every 10 jobs locally for the past decade. And for every $1 we pay in wages, $5 is generated in the local economy for a total of $340 million each year. Without all these Citizen Potawatomi Nation employees, more than $10.2 million in sales tax revenue would be lost. Besides providing steady paychecks to families, businesses of the Citizen Potawatomi Nation support other local businesses. As a matter of fact, 30 cents of every dollar we spend is spent in Shawnee, supporting many other jobs, jobs that provide taxes to Shawnee. But jobs aren't the only way we support our community. Over the past few years, we've donated to more than 175 local charitable and civic organizations, built public recreational facilities, and given directly to local schools and organizations like these. In terms of dollars and cents, the Citizen Potawatomi Nation is making a substantial commitment to our community. $26 million in education assistance since 2005, providing more than 25,000 scholarships and helping 2,000 students a year attend camps, after-school programs, and other events. 
$34.4 million since 2005 for public parks, a golf course, baseball fields, and a museum. $24 million on water and sewer infrastructure in Shawnee since 2005, plus another $7.6 million for roads and bridges benefiting drivers throughout the area, and over $10.6 million for public safety since 2005, including street lighting, storm shelters, and emergency management. Today, we train and field 24 CLEAT certified cross-deputized officers who can serve the entire county as needed. On top of all those donations, we're very proud that six out of 10 Citizen Potawatomi Nation employees regularly contribute time and money to local civic and charitable organizations. Put it all together, and our commitment is obvious. The Citizen Potawatomi Nation and tribes throughout the state have a tremendous impact, a positive impact on our communities, our state, and all our lives. Okay, that'll wrap up another episode of Native News Today here on the CW Network. Certainly love our home here on the CW. Love being here uh, with you every Saturday from the Muskogee Media Studios. What a great show we had this week. A little bit of everything, as we always do. We like to feel like we have really uh, a great eclectic mix for you every Saturday. Uh, just a little bit of everything. So uh, we take a look at uh, Citizen Potawatomi Nation and all the tribes, all the 39 federally recognized tribes here in Oklahoma, and the impact that they're having on this great state, whether it be in healthcare, jobs, uh, medical, um, it's, it's just a, a massive impact uh, that can't be ignored any longer. It's a wonderful thing, and, and we love sharing information like that. Great to see the principal chief speaking at Bay Cone and those Bay Cone administrators and uh, really the top staff there at Bay Cone recognizing the Muskogee Creek Nation contribution. Uh, it's always wonderful to show features like that taking a look back at the gathering, the American Indian Chamber of Commerce of Oklahoma. Certainly wish them a great conference coming up there in Durant. We definitely will have to sneak down there and, and bring you another feature for them uh, on this new year and all the great things that they're doing. So we want to just say thank you, Mado, to all the folks that made the show happen this week. Um, and we love being right here on the CW, but we know that some of you aren't in our viewing area. We definitely appreciate our online viewers. You go to the YouTube channel, you, you watch our videos, we see that you're viewing our videos. We appreciate that. Please share them and continue to do so. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com, Native News CW19. You can also go to our Twitter account, at Native News Guys. See what we're doing throughout the week and, uh, you know, make sure we're working. Don't, don't, you know, don't, if you see we're slacking a little bit on our Facebook page, uh, let us know we need to get out there and get going. So. I want to thank you all for joining us this Saturday. Love putting the show out. Jared Moore, Tyler Roberts, all the great people doing the things here to make it happen. We'll see you guys next week.